The second part um, is about rationalizing the denominator. So now that you've kind of practiced with some square roots, we're going to talk about rationalizing the denominator. So what does this word rationalize mean? Well, any number that can't be re represented as a fraction um, is what's considered an irrational number. Um, and also numbers that are non-repeating decimals. So like 0 0.11111, that would be... Um, that would be a rational number, but the square root of three is some decimal that continues on and on and on without any repeats. And so it would be considered an irrational number. But what we want in the denominator is we want only rational numbers. So we're going to take this irrational number, all of these irrational numbers here, and we are going to turn them into rational numbers. Okay, so numbers like integers would be rational numbers. So we're going to take this one here. And we are going to turn this into um, a bunch of rational numbers in the denominator. So the first thing that we want to do when we're rationalizing the denominator is we want to look first to make sure that this number here is not a perfect square. Because if it is, then it's just a matter of taking the square root in the denominator. But I know that 3 is not a perfect square. So in order to get rid of this number that's in the denominator, we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the radical that's in the denominator. And really what we're doing is we're multiplying this by 1 because 3 over radical 3 over radical 3 is the same thing as 1. So I'm not really changing the value of this because I'm multiplying it by 1. So here's what happens. In the denominator, when you multiply a radical times itself, what you're really doing is you're taking the square root of 3 and you're squaring it. And that effectively cancels out the exponent and the radical, leaving you with just what's underneath the radical sign. So by multiplying this number times itself, we actually get rid of that radical sign and we're just left with the number that's underneath. In the numerator, just like in the previous lesson when we talked about um, when you have 18 times a radical or a number times a radical, you can't multiply this number here times the number that's under the radical sign because this doesn't really actually mean the number 3. It's representing a different number. So we just write them right next to each other. So 18 radical 3. Now the last thing that we need to look for is if there's anything that can be simplified. And so I can only look at these two right here because these are both numbers not with radical signs. So I could ignore this 3 over here and just think about, okay, well, if I had 18 divided by 3, what would that give me? And then that answer is what we would use. So 18 divided by 3 is 6, and then we keep that radical 3 afterwards. So this would be our answer right here. Same thing here. We have radical 2, square root of 2 in the denominator. This is an irrational number, and we only like to have rational numbers in the denominator. So we're going to multiply this times the square root of 2, and we're going to do that on the top and in the numerator and in the denominator. And in the numerator, again, we're going to get 9 radical 2, 9 square root of 2. And in the denominator, we're going to do radical 2 times radical 2, which is just the number 2. And then again, we want to check to make sure to see if we can simplify anything. Well, 9 divided by 2 is going to give us a decimal, and we only want to write that answer if it's going to be an integer, a whole number. So we're going to leave this 9 over radical, or the 9 over 2 alone. And so this whole thing right here, this 9 square root of 2 over 2, is what our answer is going to be equal to. And some of you might be thinking, well, why can't I simplify this number here with this number here? Remember, this isn't actually the number 2. This represents the square root of 2, which is 1.141414, whatever. So I can't actually simplify these two because this one is a square root of 2, and this one is just the number 2. All right, well, what happens if you have a radical in the numerator and in the denominator? Okay, so same thing. We still want to multiply by the radical that's in the denominator. 
And when we multiply these two together, remember, because you're multiplying the same number, square root of 2 times the square root of 2, that's when that radical sign goes away. If I'm multiplying two different square roots together, then what happens is I keep the radical sign and I multiply the two numbers together. So I take the square root of 7 times the square root of 2 and we get the square root of 14. And again, this part right here is kind of like the radical 2 and the 2 up here. I can't simplify these two numbers because this isn't actually the number 14. It's the square root of 14, which is 3 point something, and 2. So our answer would look just like this. Okay, for the last one, again, we want to multiply by the number that's in the denominator, so the square root of 3. And we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3. We have square root of 5 times square root of 3, which is, since we're multiplying two different numbers, square root of 5 and the square root of 3 together, we multiply the two numbers that are underneath the square root sign, and so we get the square root of 15. In the denominator, however, we're multiplying two of the same number together, square root of 3 times square root of 3. And so those two numbers are just going to lose the radical sign, and we just get the number 3. Now again, similar to this one over here, I can't take 15 and divide it by 3, because this isn't actually the number 15, it's the square root of 15, which is 3 point something, and this is 3. So I can't take 15 divided by 3 for my answer. I have to leave it just like this.